So showing the um, Tetragon 3 XT now completely set up with the fly sheet on and the center panel of the vestibule open. Um, this model, the 2 XT and the 3 XT, virtually the same, other than the interior dimensions. Um, what you have is a uh, large D-sized si door, and then the coverage vestibule over the door at the one side. On the back end, it is not a second door and second vestibule. What you have is a waterproof coated fabric panel. The awning stretches out from the tent, protecting a high position window that can be opened up for ventilation. Now we'll show you that in a moment in the video as we walk around the tent. Um, but the 2XT and the 3XT, which I am standing beside, are single door, single vestibule. The 4, 5, and 8XT Tetragons come with two doors and two vestibules, which you'll see in the rest of the video. Setup for all the Tetragons is the same, other than the final stake out of the vestibules on the backside of these tents. Hi, we're, I'm Jim Stevens with Eureka Canada, and I'm here to uh, show you some setup uh, displays for some of our tents. Right now we're going to work on the Tetragon 5XT. The first thing you want to do after you make your purchase is take it home, pull the tent out of the bag, check for parts, and set it up just to make sure everything's in good shape before you head out on your trip. What you're going to do when you unpack your tent out of the bag, the components that you're looking for, the tent body right here, and fly sheet, bag of poles, and in the case of this one, we'll go through and set up it'll have two mainframe and two fly poles, a gear loft which will be fitted into the tent once it's up, and then a bag that will have your stakes, your guy lines, your printed instructions, and a little tube of seal. Okay, once you've uh, pulled out your tent, you've spread out the parts, and you've got some of your poles, you want to check for a perfect site. What you're looking for is level conditions, so there won't pull water in the case of rain. And secondly, you want to check for any sharp, protruding objects that could damage the fabric. With the Tetragon Series XT series of tents for Canada, you have two poles that will make your main your main frame. We'll use them first, and then two smaller poles that will create your, your fly rod systems. The key to all of the pole assembly, and this applies to any tent, is right here at the ferrule inserts. They must be inserted all the way. If you only go partially, there's a very great chance that when you flex and put pressure on the frame, you could damage the poles. That is not covered by warranty, although it's repairable. So please, be it aluminum or fiberglass, insert the ferrules all the way. So what we're doing, we're just making that uh, those insertions here on the four poles, and then we'll be ready for the uh, setup of the inner tent. Closing your site, it's flat, it's going to have good drainage, it's protected from any sharp objects. You can choose at this time if you do have uh, an old tarp or a piece of plastic cut to shape, or you can buy a floor saver that we offer. They can be laid down on the ground ahead of putting down the tent. They don't require a ground sheet, it just is going to give you longer life to the uh, tent by stopping any extra abrasion that may occur. Okay, once you've chosen your site, it's a simple process of getting the tent body and spreading it out in the desired location. If you're setting a tent up and it's extremely windy outside, when you're doing your setup, what you can choose to do is stake one of the corners down at this point in the direction that the wind is coming. We don't have a particularly windy day today for the setup, but I'll go ahead and do it anyways. And the wind seems to be coming a little bit out of the north, so I'll choose the uh, appropriate corner. Just basically at the corners on this particular tent, it's a ring and pin, just fit the stake into the ring and angle it about a 45 degree angle under the tent. Just showing you the close-up of the corners of the Tetragon tents and you'll see that they're, they're, this is what we call the ring and pin. So the ring with the pin and we'll explain what the pin does in a moment but that system is well reinforced into the corner body of, of the tent, all four corners. What the uh, ring is going to be doing, it'll go into the base of the ferrule of one of the pole ends which are hollow, and that's how the connection from the corners of the tent to the frame is made. Just showing you as well that when you're doing the staking process, 
It's through this ring that I was talking about and angling your stake on about a 45 degree angle as best you can into the ground that you've got. For some trips you may be going on, some of the parks, uh, the ground could be a little bit uh, uh, firmer. You sometimes they're using the crushed gravel. Taking along a small hammer or a tent mallet is often uh, a little bit of benefit just to help you make your stake secure. As we talked earlier, we built our, our poles by inserting all the ferrules firmly and fully. Now what we're doing on the case of the Tetragon tents, as I showed you just previously, we've got the ring and pin in the corner. Taking that, fitting it in to the base end of the pole. And then on the tent seam, I follow up and I attach the first two clips to the frame. So a very simple process, following the seam up from the corner to, to the tent. I do this because for myself, all the tents have to be able to be set up by myself easily. And if it's a challenge to do so, then I have to make design changes to the tent, or in some cases it doesn't uh, pass the grade and the tent just doesn't go forward. So these, these tips are done for a solo setup, but uh, with two people it's still nice uh, little tips to help you set it up without too much issue. So now I'm just reversing to the diagonally opposite corner, repeating the process. And this will create the first of the two hoops. Again, ring and pin, pin into the base of the pool, follow up, attach the first two clips. So now what I'm going to do at this stage is do the same process for the remaining pool. Don't worry if this falls down on you, that's why you've clipped it in already. Ring and pin, pin in the base of the pool, clip one, clip two, and now I'll go to the final corner. What I will do here, the pole's here, so I'll just rest that on my shoulder. Flex the second pole. What you're starting to see is the tent take shape as we go. And clip one, clip two. What you can do at this point, it's a little easier to do it now than later, Take your shoes off if you wish, although my shoes are brand new and not dirty. So I can step into the tent, grab the crossover toggle and loop system, and make the tent connection. And then the last step, very straightforward, attach all your remaining clips. You will notice that the tent doors are open. That is easier for take down to have them open. Um, two reasons, it just allows the air to, uh, when you're rolling the tent up, to move out of the tent faster. And secondly, when you're doing the step that I just did, you can just step in and make the attachment. We're almost done with the setup for the inner tent. Finally, what I will do for the, to finish this off is I'll just stake out the two remaining corners of the tent. We're going to just touch base on some of the features of the uh, inner tent, and this applies to all the Tetragon uh, XT family in the uh, program, which we offer in a two-person, three-person, four-person, the five here, and then an eight-person uh, as well. So what you're getting with the whole series is in the upper portion of the tent, it's a combination of no CM mesh, and this is important. No seams, if you've ever been bitten by no seams or sand fleas as they're also known. Extremely small little insect, but uh, can aggravate you to no end with their biting. In a lot of the open weave mesh found in some of the, the uh, I won't mention brands, but screen houses, no, the no seam mesh isn't used and the no seams just uh, crawl right on inside. Low cost tents would be the same. We will use nothing but a no seam mesh an hour. So you've got that on both sides and in the roof panels. That's going to um, ensure good tent flow, airflow for the tent uh, during the summer months, what these tents are designed for. Uh, fiberglass frames, and we use a specific diameter for the different size tents. Um, obviously, thicker diameter as you go up um, in, the, in the height of the tent. The doors themselves, huge wide open doors, so that in, entry and access of the tent is very, very simple. And then indoors, um, you, in the upper portion of the tent, that's where you position this. This is called a gear loft. 
and it's a great item for storing items that you really, one, don't want to lose, and two, that you don't want to break or step on. So your reading glasses or glasses in general, items of that nature. There are also down on both sides smaller accessory pockets for uh, flashlights or books that you may want to have during the night. So I'm just going to clip this inside now. The 5XT that I'm in would be the first of the true stand-up height tents and obviously easier for some of us to stand inside than others, but it's got a center peak height of approximate six foot. Uh, so even those of you who are taller, you'll still be able to stand up comfortably uh, to be able to pull on your pants, etc. Next step, the inner tent's up, now we have to put on the fly sheet. So what I'm doing here is just, I place the fly on the ground upside down, so it'll have the uh, coated side or the inside of the uh, fly sheet upward. And I'm going to fit in and, and attach the two fly rods or ridge poles to the tent. What you're looking for, above each door, at the ends of the zippers, you'll have these little small pockets in there to fit in the end of the fly pole. You'll have the same if you kind of basically follow along a seam. You'll see one at the other door, same position. Flex the pole slightly to make the fit. And then you'll have two Velcro fasteners on the fly sheet that you'll want to fish, uh, affix to the pole. And we're going to repeat the process. next part is arguably the hardest part of the, of the whole setup. Not hard, but the hardest part. Um, I'll show you it doing one person, but with two people basically it will be getting the pole ends as I've got here, and the second person at the opposite end, just turning it, lift, inverting it, and setting it down on the fly sheet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this basically the same thing, but do it by myself. Turn it up, over. is kind of centered in position on top. Now what I'm looking for are these loops. These are the guy line loops. On the underside, again, we've got Velcro fasteners. They position themselves just below this clip on the frame. So you one, two, so they go un below or between the first and second clips on all four corners of the tent. Obviously, if you're working with a second person, you're doing this all at the same time. Okay, and the last step, as far as the fly attachment goes, at the corners of the fly, you'll have a uh, stretch cord with a hook. That same ring on the ring and pin system that we talked about earlier, you take the hook and simply hook it to the ring in all four corners. final setup for the tent um, is going to be uh, stretching out the vestibule, staking them down, and then uh, the sides of the tent as well. So what you've got inside, and this is crucial, um, step that you really need to do, and I, when I walk around parks and I see tents set up, be it my own or other brands, and they haven't done this step, I cringe, because in the event of a rain, you're either going to have water issues inside, 
definitely going to have lousy ventilation. So you've got the cords, the, the guy lines attached to the lower portion of the fly. That's also been reinforced. Just put your stake in, stretch it out as best you can, and stake it out. What you're trying to do here is create a nice gap so there's a good distance, probably something in that size from the tent to the fly. Two things it'll do, it just sheds rain further away from the tent. In the case of a splash up, no chance of coming back inside the tent. And secondly, more importantly, it creates a nice airflow so the cooler air can come in underneath and travel out through the vents, which you'll see in a second on the vestibules. So now I'm just going to, we have these vestibules, both ends of the tent is a symmetrical design, so doors either side and the same vestibule system on either side. Um, what I'm doing now, fence up, sides have been staked out, taking the loop from one corner of the vestibule, stretching it as best I can, and staking it in. Again here you're going through the loops and trying to do it at that 45 degree angle. So you're going to have something that should look like this. You have corner vents here, a little prop rod built into the fly, just attach your Velcro, and that's what I was talking about, the, the chimney effect, cool air coming underneath the fly, and the warmer air escaping out the fly. What the vestibules will offer, obviously, is a protection to the door, so it's going to guarantee dry tent entry and some storage space for items that don't need to go inside the tent with you. You have some options with the uh, vestibule as well. You can stake it as we've got it in here, which allows you to access the tent through the zipper here, or in the case of fair weather, should you decide to do so. You can roll up the center portion of the fly just for a nice and easy entry, fair weather use. And again, you would be doing this on both sides of the tent. So that's the one option that you've got. The other option that you have is you can choose. Some people might do this. If it's a, in particular, if it's an extremely uh, rainy period, switch the position. So instead of staking it on the outside loop, stake it now on what would be the, the center panel loop. You now have the ability to come in from the corner. Why this is a, an advantage at times, if you just, as I said, experience a lot of rain, it's just easier to come in here, step inside to a larger protected area, and then peel off raincoats and such. So just the versatility of the vestibule. And finally, the vestibule walls here should it be just absolutely gorgeous weather, which is what we all are hoping for, you can seal them off, you can roll this up, you can tie off the far side to make it wide open access on those warm, beautiful days. Just lastly, a few other features that all tents should have, not just the Tetragon series, be it a Eureka or any brand you're buying, um, and it reflects on the quality and the performance of the tent. Any exposed scene should have taping that's done at the factory. So where I'm pointing out here is the scene where the zipper flap is applied, and that's just showing you how the uh, taping process to uh, eliminate any water problems. And a couple other features are the positioning of the guy lines. Uh, these are these loops here, and in the case of this one, there's one on each pool, so four in total, and the guy line ropes are in the stake bag provided. Guy lines, it's crucial that they be positioned properly. This is uh, well positioned here. Oftentimes, you'll see them high up on the tent, and unless that's in conjunction with an elbow design in the frame, it's pointless. Because you can have it tied there, but that's not where the, full, the pole will flex in the case of a wind. It's going to be further down. So what you will want to do in a, uh, you know you're in exposed conditions such as this site, or uh, it's, storms are uh, imminent, or you're going to be away from your site for a period of time. Use the guy lines, tie them off, and come out on a uh, straight angle out and stake it down. If you anticipate real strong winds, you can actually use two guy lines per corner, doing it kind of in an inverted V pattern. Very important though if uh, you experience winds or you're going to be leaving your site for a period of time. The other thing I point out here or these locations here, we do with our Eureka uh, Canadian tents in your stake bag. Have a little, pack, a little seam 
uh, seam grip, a little tube, with the applicator. The question we often get asked is, are the tents waterproof? And yes, they are. The fabrics are treated to a coating level to withstand uh, a column of water up to 1.2 or 2 or 5 meters high, depending on the tent. However, uh, I always tell my customers that you may experience little leakage, uh, pin drip of water coming through. It might not ever happen, but I want you to be aware of it. And that'll occur at spots like here or here, where you have multiple layers sewn into the seam. Even though it's taped, there's the small chance of water working through. Don't be alarmed if that's all you've got. When the weather's dry, take out your seam sealant, apply it just on the yeah, about a five centimeter uh, stretch along your seam stitching, problem solved. So now you're going to do a walk around of the Tetragon 5 XT. And as I said earlier, this is one of a number of sizes available in Tetragon XT tents. There's the two person, three person, and four person, as, long, as well as the five currently shown here, and then the uh, larger eight person, the 8 XT. The only difference really as you go up in size is going to be the 8 XT will have an internal room divider to make it a two room option. But otherwise they all will look somewhat the same as far as the setup. Two main poles for the inner tent, two fly rods for the, the fly system, doors at either side, and vestibules on either side. With the tent you're getting a heavier fabric floor, it's a 150 denier polyester, uh, and then the fly sheet itself is a 75D polyester. These are both treated to a 1500 millimeter uh, coating level, and what that is telling you is that it's, it, the fabric is tested to withstand a meter and a half of water before any penetration could occur. That's not going to happen in any rainstorm, and it's not going to happen uh, should you spray a hose on it. The only time you could experience a leak uh, would be if you set up on a puddle and stood on the fabric. That pressure enough could force some water through, but very, very unlikely. Bathtub floor design, so the seams of the floor are raised and then overlapped by the protection of the fly sheet. That's consistent throughout the Eureka program. In fact, that's something that Eureka was noted for in the early stages of the company. With all Eureka tents, they do come with a uh, lifetime warranty against manufacturer defect. That does not mean that when they wear out, you get a new tent. What it means is if the tent has a defect that's premature from normal wear and tear, uh, then we want to hear from you and work with you to get it corrected. But eventually, coatings will break down. Eventually, zippers will let go. It's all part of the normal process in the wearing of the tent. But with that said, you should get 10, maybe more. I've heard people who've had their tents for 25 to 30 years. Thank you. Oftentimes people ask, can I get the tent back in that bag? Well, now we're going to find out. But yes, you should be able to. So just reverse the process. Pulling out all your stakes. Making all your fly to frame connections, loosening them all off. Again, if it happens to be windy, you can leave your stakes on the corners of the tent in to eliminate your tent possibly being blown around. Today I don't have that worry. Okay, stakes back in the bag. Off the fly. Do with the fly sheet. I'll grab the point. Tie up. And if I wind, I'll 
let the wind blow the fabric. But I'm just trying to get it down to about the width of the pull bag, or of the tent bag. Pull this one up at this point. Again, looking at the tent bag kind of for direction as to how big I want my roll to be, or how wide in particular. Step one. Step two, the inner tent. The rings out. Okay, all the holes into the pull bag. Same thing as I do with the fly, folding this to get down to a size that will fit into the pull bag. Some people will ask the question, because years ago stuffing was recommended for packing a tent. Not so much anymore, that had to do with a coating issue that's been long since perfected. I prefer this method, I just find it a little simpler, a little easier, and for me, just like a little cleaner process. I'll do it like that. You notice I'm rolling out towards the open door. And much like a, just a basic roll up system. Tent fly on the inside. And as I'm rolling, trying to keep the, the roll as tight as possible. There are ties that I have over there, but even without. I can get this tent back into its tent bag, single-handedly. And even room, as I should have, for the stakes. There you go.